Amen.
Amen. Dakilang Dios, maraming salamat Panginoon sa gabing ito na pinagkalag nito sa amin. Lord, hindi Panginoong Diyos, kami po ay nagpapakumbaba sa inyo, Panginoon. Hindi Panginoong Diyos, ng kapatawaran sa lahat po ng aming Diyos. Salangan po namin ang Diyos, sa inyo, Panginoon, sa mga magkita ng dugo, Panginoon. At yalay niyo po sa aming Diyos, ang iyong pong awa sa bawat isa po sa amin. Lord, sa oras po ito, tulungan niyo po kami, Panginoong Diyos, na lubusan po na wala yes. Diyos. Ang iyong pong salita, Panginoong Diyos. Sa Panginoon Panginoong Diyos, ang aming tagapagturo sa gabing ito, Panginoon, pinitin niyo po siya. Katawad, Panginoong Diyos, ni Brother Mike Abeto, Panginoong Diyos. Yes, Lord. Lord, salamat po, Panginoong Diyos. At ito po ang aming dalang at pangalan ng aming Panginoong Diyos. Amen. 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 Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat at good afternoon sa ibang uh, uh, bansa sa mundong ito. At uh, sa Kenya, we say Habariya Johnny in Swahili. At uh, Now, itong verse po na ito, this was quoted from the book of Exodus chapter number 9. But before we go there, I want you to take note of the word for the scripture, Say it unto Pharaoh. Ang nagsasalita po dyan, none other than, sino? Yung scripture. And he was talking to whom? To Pharaoh. So there's no doubt about it. Now, look at what uh, Apostle Paul did in his quotation from Exodus chapter number 9. And let's compare this scripture with this scripture. That's the basic study. For you to be able to understand more about the scripture is to compare verses with verses. Exodus chapter number 9, verse number 16. Ito yung kinote po ni Apostle Paul. So Romans chapter number 9. Sabi rito, and, and, and in very deed for this cause, have I raised thee up for to shew in thee my power and, by, and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. Now, yes, you can see in verse number 16, wala po yung word na scripture. Okay? But you can see the word I. Sino yung I na yun? This is verse number 16. You go to verse number 13. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. Now, ang nangyari po dyan, Sa quotation po ni Apostle Paul, ang ginamit niya is scripture. For the scripture, say it. Pero ang original wording supposed to be ay what? Lord of uh, Exodus chapter number 9, verse, 16, uh, verse 13 and 16. So kung titingnan niyo mabuti, ang ginawa ni Apostle Paul dyan, instead na using the word scripture, uh, yung Lord, kasi quotation niya from Exodus chapter number 9, eh, verse 13 to 16. Pero wala kayong makikita ang scripture doon. So, ang ginawa ni Paul, yung word na Lord, yung capital L-O-R-D. Instead of using that, alam nyo ginamit niya? Scripture. So, dito natin makikita po, the importance, why it is so important for us Bible believers to understand what does the scripture say it about the scripture. Why? Because you can see from these verses, the relationship of the Lord to His written words. Kaya nga makikita nyo rin ha, ang pangalan po ng Panginoong Sokristo, sabi ng John chapter number 1, verse number 1, in the, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And look at that in verse number 14, sabi ron, and the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no any shadow of doubt. And when you look at that, in Revelation chapter number nine, 19, verse number 13, Babalik sa ulit. And His second coming, ang sabi po ron, and His name is the Word of God. So from those standpoints of verses, we can see the relationship of the Word of God with the Lord. Okay? Kaya nga makita nyo rito, ang, uh, sa Bible po, meron pong tatlong klase ng revelation. How the Lord revealed Himself. First, through His creation. That is Romans chapter number 1, verse number 20. Second revelation niya is the Lord Jesus Christ. For us to understand what is about, what, who is God, we need to understand the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And the third revelation is none other than the Word of God. So, tatlo po yung revelation. Creations, that is Romans chapter number 1, verse number 20. The Lord Jesus Christ, you can find that in John chapter number 14. And 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 16. Without, uh, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God 
was manifest in the flesh. Sino yung nagmanifest na? That's God. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. And last one is the Word of God. You can find that in John chapter 5, verse 39. Search these scriptures. Okay? So from these verses, we can see the relationship of this scripture with the Lord. Kaya nga naniniwala po tayo, we Bible believers, there must be a perfect Word of God somewhere there. Okay? So, we're not talking about the King James Bible. Kasi it would be, it would sound biased, tulad na sinasabi ko kanina, alam naman natin na naniniwala tayo sa King James Bible to be the Word of God. And kung ganun kasi ang magiging standpoint natin, Brother June, na dinidefend natin ang King James Bible because we believe, magiging biased kasi yun. Kasi pwede mo gawin yun sa NIV eh. Idedepend mo yung NIV kasi ginagamit mo. Hindi po ganun ang argument. Did really God gave us a perfect Word of God? Okay? If God provided us the perfect and pure Word of God, where is it? Yun ang question nun eh. Kung binigay niya sa atin yung tinatawag nilang original autographs, yung Hebrew and Greek na sinulat po nila Peter, nila Moses, eh bakit wala yun? Nakita niyo po yun? Now, let's open this. Hebrews chapter number 10, verse number 7. Ilingin ko po si Brother June, pakibasa po. Hebrews chapter number 10, verse 7. Okay, so that verse was quoted from the book of Psalm. Tingnan niyo pong mabuti ito ha. Hebrews chapter 10 verse number 7. Then said I, who is that I? That's the Lord. Law, I come, that's the Lord, in the volume of the book. Okay? It is written of me. Nasaan yung book na ito? Okay, so again, of course, automatically, we as Bible believers, we claim that is the King James Bible. But for the sake of those fundamentalists as sa mga Bible critics, hindi natin hindi King James Bible yan. Pagpalagay na natin. Kung hindi King James Bible, nasaan at ano? Okay? So, ito po yung naturo namin sa inyo for you to be able to contend and defend your faith about the Word of God. So, kung hindi ang King James Bible, ang tinutukoy dito, ano yung, anong book ito? Where is it? Okay? Another verse, John chapter 10, verse 35. John chapter number 10, verse 35. Brother John? Alright. So that verse was quoted from the book of Psalm, chapter 82, to be exact. Makita niyo yung word na sa John chapter 10, verse 35, the scripture cannot be what? Broken. Nakita niyo po yan? The scripture cannot be broken. If the scripture cannot be broken, then, therefore, we conclude that we have those scripture. Okay? If we have that scripture in our hands, where is it and what is it? Okay? So again, hindi natin muna ikiklaim na yun ay King James Bible. Ikiklaim natin yan later on. So, nasan yung cannot be broken scripture na to? Okay? So, ang gagawin lang natin, we have to ask them this question, if that is not the King James Bible, then what is it and where is it? Amen? Nakita niyo po yan? These are just simple argument. This is very simple argument. Now, the scripture cannot be broken. Turn your Bible, please, in the book of 2 Timothy chapter number 3, verse number 16. 2 Timothy chapter number 3, verse number 16. Sige po, Brother John. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 16. Okay, now this scripture, kita niyo po ito, yung word na scripture, sabi niyan, all scripture is given by what? Not inspired, okay? We have to be careful about using those words. It is what? Given by inspiration. What is the meaning of inspiration? Now, may mga preachers, they used to go, they used to, uh, uh, go to Greek. Ang Greek po ng uh, inspiration is Theopneustos. Okay? means God breathed. Now, let, let's use the, the Bible itself to define the word inspiration. 
Go with me please in the book of Job, chapter number 32. Job. Pagkatapos po ng book of Revelation. Revelation, Job. Okay? Job, chapter number 32. Verse number 8. Brother John? Okay, yung word po na inspiration, twice lang po yan, nag-appear sa King James Bible. One here, Job chapter 32, verse number 8, and it was uh, used for a man, for the man, okay? And the other one is in Second uh, Timothy chapter 3, verse number 16, and it was used applying sa scripture. So what's the meaning of inspiration? Verse number 8, let me just read again. But there is a spirit in man, inspiration, mighty, understanding. Go to Job chapter 33, verse number 4. Now, the word inspiration here is related with the word of God. Sige po. Verse 4 hanggang verse 5. The Spirit of God has made me and the breath of the Almighty has given me life. Verse 5. Tingnan niyo po. If thou cast after me, set thy words, words in order. Nakita niyo po yan? Isa verse number 5, If thou canst answer me, set thy words in order. Nakita niyo po yan? Words in order. Now, the meaning of inspiration means God breathe. Okay? God breathe. You can find that also in Genesis chapter 2, verse number 7, And the Lord God formed man out of the, out of the dust of the ground and breathed unto his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. So, ibig sabihin pala, Yung scripture na ito na given by inspiration, God breathe, buhay. Kaya nga tama yung Hebrews chapter 4 verse number 12. Diba? Quick, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. That means if you have this scripture, and this scripture you have is the given by inspiration, then you have what? Buhay na word of God, alive. Amen? So ang tanong, Nasaan ito? Namatay ba? Kasi buhay siya dito eh. Ang ibig sabihin ng inspiration is God breathe. Buhay. Alive. So kung ito ay wala tayong word of God now, in our hands today, available, so ibig sabihin pala, we, we, um, they assume that the scripture died many years ago. Okay? So, hindi po ganun ang sinasabi po ng Bible. Because what? Go to uh, 2 Timothy. Let's go back there. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 15. Yung given by inspiration na to, tinawag itong Holy Scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 15. Sige po, sa ating reader. 3.15. Yo. So, nakita nyo yun? Ang tawag po dito sa scripture na to na given by inspiration in verse number 16, ayan o, Holy Scripture. Nasaan yung Holy Scripture na to? If we don't have it today, where is it? Okay? If that is not the King James Bible, then what is it? Don't tell me that's the NIV. Okay? Because they removed the word holy in their Bible. Now, go with me please in the book of Daniel chapter 10 verse 21. Daniel chapter 10 verse 21. Kaya nga po, ang argument po natin dito, yung may mga pastors, may mga professors na nagsasabi na uh, ang Word of God is only preserved in the originals. So let's see, let's check. Sige po, Brother June. Alright. Hindi po ako yan. Okay, so sabi rito sa Daniel chapter 10 verse 21, the scripture of truth. Okay? Scripture of truth. Now, yung truth po na yan, hindi po yan relative. Yung po absolute truth. You can find that in John chapter 17 verse number 17. Hindi, ko, hindi po namin na dagdag. You can find the, this in John chapter number 17 verse number 17. Sige po, pakibasa po. John chapter 17, verse number 17. 
John chapter 17, verse number 17. Okay tayo, sister. Okay lang. Okay, now ito po yan. Kung wala tayong scripture na to na scripture of truth in our hands today, paano natin ipaglalaban yung katotohanan? How we can defend truth and paano magiging sinasabi natin, ita, paano natin ililift yung truth? Ano yung i-defend natin? Kung wala tayong scripture of truth at yung scripture of truth na yan, sabi ni Jesus Christ, mismo ha, John 17, 17, thy word is truth. If we don't have that truth, that scripture of truth, Ano pa pag-usapan natin dito? Ibig sabihin, the rest are what? Lies. So, that's why we require God Himself, we require God to give us what? Scripture. Okay? We require God to give us what? Perfect, preserved, and pure words of God. We require Him. Okay? Another one. Go to John chapter 5, verse 39. John chapter 5, verse number... 39. John chapter 5, verse number 39. Now, mamimili lang po kayo dito, mga kapatid. It's either the Lord Jesus Christ is the greatest liar step in this world or siya po ang nagsasabi ng katotohanan. Why? Bakit mo nasabi yan, Brother Mike? So, John chapter 5, verse 39, the Lord Jesus Christ told His disciples to what? To search the Scriptures. For in them you think you have what? Eternal life. And they, nakita niyo word na dalawang they doon, and they are they, Old and New Testament, and they are they which testify of me. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Nakita niyo yan? Now, bakit ang Panginoong Sokristo, why the Lord Jesus Christ would uh, tell His disciples to search the Scriptures if they don't have them? Why the Lord Jesus Christ to give them a scripture. Amen? They have it. Okay? Now, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 16. This is Apostle Peter. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number 16. Kaya nga ito, common sense lang ito eh. You have to dig in your words. Tatlong bagay po ang kailangan yung gawin sa word of God. One is what? Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. That is Isaiah 34, 16. Diba? Tatlong SS yan eh. SSS, Social Security System. Hindi po 666, ha? Alright? Pangalawang po S is what? Search. John 5.39. At pangatlo po, study. 2 Timothy 2.15. Now, go with me please in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 16. Pakibasa po. Okay, so, now, even Apostle Peter, he recognized the books or the epistles of Apostle Paul as what? Scripture. See that? Even Apostle Peter and Apostle Paul, they use the word Scripture. Now, the word, the word Scripture does not mean original. Later on, we'll find that. Now, we have read this. Now, these are the verses which can prove, marami po po, we can provide a lot of verses right here. To show you that this scripture is available and not just that, we have it today. Now, the meaning of this scripture, okay, does not mean original. The meaning of this scripture in the Bible is what? The book. You have the book in your hand. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter number 1, verse number 1. Matthew chapter number 1, verse number 1. Where you can find that generation? Generation of David and generation of Abraham. That's the book of Samuel, Chronicles, and of course, Genesis. And anong tawag ng Bible? What? Book. The book of the generation. 
And that book, at the same time, yung Genesis at yung uh, the rest of the books in the Old Testament, when you read Luke chapter 24, go with me please there in Luke chapter 24, verse 44 to 45, tingnan niyo po yan, yung mga books po niyan, yung Genesis of course, uh, Genesis up to the book of Malachi, Old Testament books. Sige po, pakibasa po. Luke chapter 24, verses 20, uh, 44 to 45. Amen. <laughs> and he said unto them, These are the words which I speak unto you while I was yet with you. Amen. That all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then open their understanding that they, they might understand the scripture. Nakita niyo po yung verse 44, sabi ron, And He said unto them, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, by the way, These are what? The words. Nakita niyo po yung words, plural, which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be what? Fulfilled, which were written in what? The law of Moses. That includes Genesis. Amen? That includes Genesis. And, and in the prophets, that includes minor and major prophets. Amen? Psalms that includes Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, etc., etc., concerning who? Me. Kaya nga pagdating dito yung Matthew 1, 1, the book of the generation of who? Jesus Christ. Yung me na yun, sa so Luke 24, is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. So the book is the scripture. Nakita niya? Okay, another one. Go with me please in Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verses 17 to 21. Verse 17 to 21. Verse 17 to 21. And there was a delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when they had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to the shield, broken hearted, Amen. to preach deliverance. You know? Okay, so that is quotation from Isaiah chapter number 61, to be exact. Now, in verse number 17, look at verse number 17, sabi ron, and was delivered unto him the book of who? Isaiah. Nakita niyo word na the book? Okay? And it was repeat in verse number 20, and he closed the book after reading verses 18 to 19. Actually, may gap dyan. Amen? So, tingnan niyo yung verse number 20, and he closed the book. But in verse number 21, that book is called what? Verse 21, And he began to say unto them, This day is this, nakita niyo word na this? Scripture. This scripture is referring to what? The book in verse 17, and in verse number 20. So that book, that scripture, mentioned so many times, back in the Old Testament, in Daniel, in New Testament, that scriptures, okay, is none other than the book. Amen? So, yan po yung uh, tinatawag nating law of comparing spiritual things and uh, spiritual. For you to uh, understand the Bible, you have to, what? Compare. Yeah. Ang problema po nito, hindi mo magagawa tong system na to. Ang tawag po rito is cross-referencing principle. Hindi mo to magagawa sa ibang version. Okay? Sa NIV, ESB, New KJB. Why? Because they have gone so many verses out from their uh, versions but if you are using the King James Bible and believing it, you can find this truth. Okay? That book is the scripture. Another one, Mark chapter 12, verse number 26. Mark chapter 12, verse number 26. Kaya nga rito makikita nyo, lumilitaw talaga ang King James Bible. Okay? Hindi natin ito dinidiscuss. Of course, alam nyo na yung reality because we believe the King James Bible. Hindi lang po yun. Pero as long as you dig, it will show up 
lalo nagiging malinaw, why we are using and believing and preaching and teaching the King James Bible. Amen? Mark chapter 12, verse 26, brother. Mark chapter 12, verse 26. And as touching the dead, that, did rise, that they rise, if ye not read in the book of Moses, how in the bush God spake unto him, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Nakita niyo yung ano? Yung the book of Moses? Just a verse po na yan. Read in the book of Moses. That's what? Exodus chapter number 3. Ang tawag po dyan ni Mark is what? The book of Moses. Exodus, ha? Pero kung babalikan nyo itong Luke chapter 24, verse 44, yung the law of Moses, hindi ba kasama dun yung Exodus? Kasama, di ba? So yung scripture na yun, sa verse 45, yun yung book. Hindi original. There is no such a thing as original. Amen? Alright? So, makita niyo yan. The book is the scripture. Now, ito po. Ipang number three natin. Which one is better? Which one is superior? Ito na po. Kasi, ito, madalas yung maririnig ito, lalo na kung nandiyan kayo somewhere in Manila. Okay? Marami dyan. Sinasabi nila, Bible Baptist na. Amen? Sinasabi nila, Bible Baptist ako. We use King James. Okay? Pero pag pinag-usapan na natin ng King James Bible, wag yan. When I was in Africa, hindi ko na may mention kung saan, kasi ma-identify nila yan eh. Nagdi-discuss ako ng King James Bible. At alam niyo, sabi sa akin ng isang tao doon, sabi niyo, huwag mong di-discuss yan. Totoo yun ba? Kung it will cause division. Totoo naman eh. Diba? Eh, kaya nga, tinuruan tayo mag-divide eh. <laughs> okay? Divide it. Pero may wrong division po ah. Yung 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Okay? Wrong division yung ginawa nila. Dinivide nila yung church, hindi yung word of God. Alright? So dito naman, makikita natin, the question is, translation versus the original. Pag sinabi natin original, of course, alam naman natin, ito yung Hebrew and Greek na kine-claim nila to be the word of God at ito yung binigay ng Panginoon but we don't have it today. Okay? Now, titingnan natin dito, titingnan natin dito, which one is superior? Translation versus the original. And biblically speaking, you will find the result later on and you be the judge. Okay? Kayo po mag-judge nito. Kung anin dito yung superior sa dalawa. Uh, translation stands for the King James Bible. And anyway, before we proceed to that, you need to understand what is the meaning of revision, edition, and translation. And kasi marami na na misunderstood nila yung meaning ng revision. Pag sinabi natin revision, most of the time, ito po, under po yan ng copyright. Okay? Under po ng copyright law, at least 20% of the thoughts and message, idea should be changed at least 20%. Okay? Now, ito po, meron pong apat na NIV. There are four NIVs. 1973, 1978, 2008, and 2011. And every NIV ay under po ng at least 20% of change. Kailangan nilang palitan nyo kasi law yun eh. Law of copyright. At pagka nag-quote ka at least 500 words, you can check that in their preface. Pag nag-quote ka ng at least 500 words, hanggang may limitation ka na. Kailangan mo mag-write uh, ng letter or permission, asking permission sa mga sa tinatag po nating board of editors ng NIV. You can find that in their preface. Now, kung every revision, we're talking about revision ng NIV, apat by 20, Brad. So that means kung apat na yan, ilan yan? 80% na tinanggal. Changes ang nangyari. So ilang word of God na lang meron ka? 20%. At yung uh, 19% ton, kurap pa. So may 1% ka lang na Word of God. Meron ako nabasa sa isang author, kay Dr. Rachman, sabi niya, kung ano yung mga words na nabanggit sa NIV, nagaling sa King James yun lang ang Word of God. <laughs> okay? I don't know how you understand that. Okay? Now, let's proceed. Which one is superior? Translation or versus the original? Let's go to Genesis chapter number 5. First example. Genesis chapter number 5. Beginning in verse number 21 down to verse 24. 
Genesis chapter 5, verse 21 down to verse 24. familiar tayo sa story na to. This is Enoch was raptured back in Genesis chapter number 5. Kaya makita nyo dispensation pa rin yan eh. Genesis chapter 5, the present situation during his time, and then what, uh, what happened after that? Flood. Amen? Now, the original that time, makita nyo, si Enoch was living in a wicked world. That is explained in Genesis chapter number 6. What is their situation? Wicked sila. So, nasasaksiyan nila yon. Same thing in our time today. The Our uh, present situation, we can call it as original. Our original situation, parang inok, nakita niya kasamaan, parang si Lot to eh. Vex. Pero nakita niyo, yung faith ni inok dito. He walk with God. At ilang beses binanggit siya? Twice. Verse 22 to 24. Dalawang beses and he walk with God. Ito yung testimony niya. Ito yung testimony niya. He walk. Now, the original situation is that Enoch was living in every type of sin nandito na sa panahon niya. That's the present situation. We call that original. Now, exactly look at Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 5. The word translation was used, was used in Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 5. Go to that. Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 5. So we will compare the, tr the original situation of Enoch versus his translation. Which one is far better? Hebrews 11, verse number 5, by faith Enoch was Amen. translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. Ooh, amen. For before his translation, we have this testimony that he is God. Nakita niyo yung testimony yun? That's he walked with God. Amen? Now, makita niyo yung word na translation is mentioned there. Uh, translated. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Now, let me tell you. Okay? Let's continue. And was not found because God had translated him for before his translation. Nakita niyo dalawang translated and one is translation. Now, Ano yung translation? Of course, yung na-rapture siya. Amen? Napunta siya sa langit without dying. For God took him. Now, which one is which one is better? Yung original Kita niyo yung wicked world and he's associating himself with them? Yeah. Or yung na-translate siya? Which one is better? First, don't tell me na yung original. Amen? Of course, yung better, yung translation. Ikaw ba naman lumipad ka sa langit? Nilampasan mo yung crystal sea? Nakita mo yun? Lumipad ka and then iniwanan mo yung wicked world? And of course, hindi niya rin naranasan yung Noah's flood. Diba? So, what is better? Not just better, but also what? Superior yung translation than the original. Amen? Second example. Second, P, uh, second Samuel chapter 3, verse number 10. 2 Samuel chapter 3, verse number 10. Now, meron, meron pong dalawang king. Yeah. 2 Samuel chapter 3, verse number 10. Now, hindi ko na kailangan to kalkalin yung istorya ni Saul at ni David. Kasi majority po sa mga nanonood natin, mga Christian dito, alam naman kung sino si Saul. Diba? At alam naman kung sino si David. Now, the original status is that 
Si Saul was chosen by the people, kaya nga yung people power, there's something wrong with that. Okay? He was chosen by the people. And for the people, alright? But who, is, who was David? He was the man or God's after, ano? Ano yung God na yun? A man, the man after God's own heart. So nakita nyo yung differences nila. The original, uh, the original status of that kingdom, ang hari nila noon, sino? Si Saul, a wicked king. Nag-ano pa to? Nag-consult pa sa sa nec- ano yun? necromancer? Sa isang uh, babao ng Panginoon. And we know who, who, sino si David. So now, ginamit yung word na, ano yan? Translate ba? Brad? Translate. To translate the kingdom from Saul to David. Now, let me ask you, which one is better? Which one is superior? Don't tell me yung original. Of course, sino? Si David. Siya naman talaga ang gusto ng Panginoon. Better than Saul. So, the original is what? Inferior than the translation. Amen? That's a biblical... Last one, Colossians chapter 1, verse number 13. Colossians chapter number 1, 13. Sige po. Colossians chapter number 1, verse number 13. Okay. Nakito pag sinabi nyo mas better yung original natin sa darkness, ano ba originally? Originally, you were born into a wrong family. Yeah. Your father is the devil, John chapter 8, verse 44. And you are hellbound. Nakita nyo yan? Actually, papunta ka ron doon sa, judgment, uh, sa great white throne judgment. Yun ang destination po natin. And that is your original status. Pero nung, nung tinanggap mo ang Panginoon sa Kristo sa verse number 13, who had delivered, nakita yung word na delivered us from. Ibig sabihin, meron kang origin. Nakita niyo yung word na from. From the power of darkness, that is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 9. Translated. Nakita niyo yung word na translated? Uh, us into the kingdom of His, dear son. Now, which one is better? Don't tell me na staying here in the darkness is far better than staying in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Okay? So dito, sa mga uh, ating mga ginamit pong uh, sample from the Bible itself, makikita niyo rito po na translation is far better, superior from the originals. And of course, the King James Bible is better than the original. What? How come? Now, ito po yung last. Superiority of the King James Bible as a translation. No, translation lang ang King James Bible. Okay, go ahead. Okay? Kung sinasabi yung translation ng King James Bible, then go ahead. Say it. Totoo naman eh. Di ba? Translation ng King James Bible. Over the original. Ito ang pinakamasakit kasi sa mga scholars eh. Kaya nga tawag po sa kanila, scholars. Yung mga scholars. Number one, first reason, nakita ba sa camera, sister? The originals no longer exist. Meron ka bang originals? Meron ka bang Hebrew and Greek? Sabi natin yes. Naintindihan mo ba? So, ibig sabihin, for us to have the access dito sa original na ito, kailangan mo muna mag-aral ng Hebrew and Greek. At ilang taon nang stay mo sa Bible school or sa seminary for you to understand the, the Bible. Di ba? So, you have to waste at least five years. Mao, sabihin natin maximum ten years, mag-aral ka muna ng original languages. And by the way, para po sa inyong kalaman, God did not inspire the language. God inspired or given by inspiration yung words. Kasi ang words po ay what? Flexible. Amen? Kaya ngayon yung sinasabi niya sa Psalm chapter 12, verse 6 and 7. Now, you don't have the originals. Even you have it, okay, hindi mo maintindihan. Eh, kung maintindihan mo man, ikaw ang magiging final authority dito kasi. Sabihin natin ako, meron akong Hebrew and Greek at ako naiintindihan ko, eh paano yung audience, audience mo o yung congregation mo? hindi nila naiintindihan ngayon. Eh, slavery po yun. You're a slave under the opinions of men. Pero kung meron kang plain English, sabi nila, mahirap intindihan ng King James Bible kasi English siya. 
Meron po kaming video na ginawa, built-in dictionary in the King James Bible. You can check that out dito po sa Facebook page po natin. Number two, the original were never a single book. Amen? Hiwa-hiwalay po yan. Hindi po sila sama-sama, kaya mapapansin po ninyo, yung the book of Isaiah, nandun doon sa sinagog. Nandun doon po yun. Nakastay siya sa one place. And later on, makita nyo mamaya bakit yung mga copies are given by inspiration at the same time. Hindi sila, hindi sila sama-sama sa isang volume. Amen? Hiwa-hiwalay po sila. Amen? Number three, common people, yung mga ordinary tao lang, cannot read the originals. Bakit? Hebrew and Greek. Kagaya na sinasabi ko po kanina, yung argument natin dito sa number one, kung ikaw ay naiintindihan, pare, alibaba si Pastor Joe, nakapag-preach siya ng Hebrew and Greek, ay eh yung mga members hindi. Anong gagawin niya? Siyempre, ipapaliwanag niya ngayon. Eh, paano yung gusto magbasa ng Word of God? Ganyan yung Iglesia ni Cristo eh. Hindi pwedeng basahin yung Word of God eh. Yung Lamsa translation nila. Kasi ang allowed lang magbasa yung ministro. Nakita niyo po yan? O, sabihin natin ganon. Pastor Joe, he can preach, he can teach Hebrew in Yung congregation, hindi. Ibig sabihin na magiging personal authority member. Hindi na yung Word of God. Nakita niyo po yan? So simple. Trick. Kaya nga tawag niya ni Pastor Joe dyan, Greek game eh. Laro yan eh. Uto-uto. Amen? Common people cannot read the originals. Number four, the originals have no chapter and verse markings. Paano pag sinabi ko sa'yo? Okay. Sa Hebrew. Isaiah chapter 60 verse number one. Mahanap mo ba yun? Hindi. What? Wala naman silang chapter and verses. Ibig sabihin, it's too difficult to study and to read the originals. Of course, wala naman originals talaga mahirap. Okay? Pero kung meron ka, hindi mo magagawa yon. O, punta ka sa ganitong verses. O, alimbawa, nagpipreach ka. Kasalukoy na preaching. O, punta ka sa Psalm chapter 3, verse number 25. Hindi mo, ilang oras ang i-stay mo bago mo mahanap yon. Okay? Nakita niyo yun? It makes sense. Number five, it never produced the quality and quantity and fruit kagaya ng King James Bible. Kaya nga, ang King James Bible po, ang text po na tawag dito is Reformation text. Amen? During the revival, it produced many souls. Amen? Kaya makikita nyo yung dalawang klase ng tree na minemension ng Panginoong Isa Kristo sa Matthew 7. Eh. May dalawang klase ng tree na produce ng fruit. Evil fruit, of course, the modern version, at yung good fruit, which is the, the text of the King James Bible. Number six, God provided us with the King James Bible, not the originals. Ang binigay ng Panginoon sa iyo, King James Bible. Binigyan kanya ng Word of God, hindi originals. And of course, number 7, yung Jeremiah chapter 36. Ito na nakaraan, diniscuss na po ito ni Pastor Joe. Yung Jeremiah chapter, uh, starting from chapter 36, yung, yung sinira po ng manuscript. Pero meron tayong copy. Anyway, I'm not going to discuss about it because we can cover that dito po sa last part po natin. We, we will cover here. This is the last one. Do you have it? Ang tanong, meron, meron ka Word of God? I'm asking James Bible. I'm asking you, do you have it? Do you have this scripture given by inspiration? Now, so, sa Matthew chapter 4 at Luke chapter 4, naalala niyo yung temptation po ng Panginoong Sokristo? It is written, sabi niya, it is written three times. And it is from chapter 91, verse number 10 and 11, or 11 and 12. Jesus had it in Luke chapter 4 and Matthew chapter 4. Meron siya. The question is, do you have it? Okay? The disciples had it. John chapter 5, verse 39. Ano po sabi ng Bible doon? Search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. Why would Jesus Christ tell His disciples to search the scriptures if they don't have them? If they don't have the scripture? It makes sense, therefore, that they had it. Meron sila available sa time nila. At si Timothy, of course, sa 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 15, and from thou was a child, thou was known holy spirit. Amen? And that scripture will lead us to Jesus Christ. Okay. Jesus had it. The disciples had it. Timothy had it. Do you have it? Yeah. Amen? Now, last one, the final kick. Go with me, please, in Acts chapter number 8. Acts chapter number 8. Beginning in verse number 27. 
Allow me just to read this verse. Acts chapter number 8, verse 27 down to verse number 35. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Ang tawag po dyan is idiomatic expression. Verse number 29. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. Verse number 30. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him, read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? Verse 31. And he said, How can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Verse number 32. The place of the scripture. Which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the, peep, the prophet this of himself or of some other man. Look at verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture, yan, and preached unto him who? Jesus. Now, yung scripture na tinutukoy nila yan, that is Isaiah chapter 53. Hindi nyo ba alam na itong hawak ng Ethiopian na to ay copy? Samuna kuwa yung brother Mike. Let me give you uh, two reasons. One, yung binabasa niyang Isaiah, yung original, kung original man, yung hawak, ni Jesus Christ sa, sa Luke chapter 4. Nandito yun, sa Luke chapter 4. Yes. Nasaan yung Luke, Luke chapter 4? Ito, verse 17 to 21. Di ba binasa niyo sa, sa sinagogue? Kung yun yung original, first reason, eh di ibig sabihin, yung bit-bit na itong Ethiopian yunok is a copy. Okay? Second reason kung bakit to ay copy lang, it's because meron kang Isaiah 53 in your King James Bible. Why? Kasi kung ito yung original, wala ka dapat, ano, wala ka Isaiah. Walang Isaiah dyan sa King James Bible mo. Kung naniniwala tayo na itong scripture na to, tandaan po ninyo ha, ang binigyan ng inspiration ay scripture, not originals. This is scripture, a copy, a copy of copies of copies. Pero bakit, Brother Mike, di ba pagkakinapi yan, sinulat ng sinulat, magkakaroon ng human error? yung tinatawag nating typographical error, kaya nga po papasok yung preservation. Amen? Doon papasok yung div uh, divine providence ng preservation. Problema ng Diyos yun, hindi mo The only uh, The only thing that is so important for us is that we have this scripture in our hands today. Amen. And ladies and gentlemen, and this scripture is none other than the King James Bible. AB 16-11. Amen? Yeah. Praise the Lord for that. And thank you for listening. Amen? You're, you did not waste your time with me. Uh, salamat po. May call on uh, Pastor Jonathan Pascual to please come to continue our discussion. Amen, amen, amen. Alright, so mga kapatid, napakaganda ng ating pinag-usapan. Actually, there is a great confusion about this uh, issue of the King James Bible. Huh? Uh, tulad po ng sinabi ni Brother, ano, ni Brother uh, Mike kanina, hindi po yung language ang pinreserve ng Diyos, the words. So it could be written in the Old Testament, it could be written in the New Testament, it could be written in the past, it could be written in the in the in the present. It could be written in the future. So hindi po yung language because the language can vary. Tulad po ng Greek, no? San ba galing dati yung yung Bible natin galing sa Hebrew? Then napalitan ng Greek. So hindi pig sabi nagistay ang Bible sa Hebrew lang. 
nag-move sa Greek. So it's not the language that is important. It is the what? The words. Now, um, uh, usually, kapag kasi nabi nilang originals, amen, they are referring to the language. Actually, ngayon, no? Pero sa totoo, pag sinabi mong original, yung unang kopya. Amen? It is not the original language. Pag sinabi natin originals, okay, tulad nito, Greek ito, tapos merong Hebrew, alright? So, ako nga, di ko nga alam pa paano nga, <laughs> paano nga babasahin ito eh. Pero at least sa, sa Greek kasi, ay uh, meron na akong konting alam sa Greek, no? sa pagbabasa nito. Pero mahirap pa rin. So, I, I need to study more. Okay. Paano mo maibibigay itong Hebrew and Greek sa isang ordinaryong tao? Tapos, babasahin niya. Pakihanap nga ang John 3.16. Okay? E baka hindi nga niya makita eh. Hindi niya makikita. Kasi nga, outside sa kanyang knowledge ito. Kaya ang Diyos, inilipat niya yung inspiration saan? Sa translation. Kasi kung nag-stay ang translation, ang, ang inspiration, doon lang sa original, ha? E paano yung translate sa language na naintindihan ng tao? E di walang inspiration niya. So, there is an inspiration in the translation. Okay? So, yan ang mahalaga ngayon. Ngayon, kung makikita mo, pagka naniwala ka na yung hawak mo ay scripture, yung iba dyan, sasabi nila, wrong, ang scripture, yung original lang. That's wrong. The scripture could be copies or could be a translation of the original language. Yun yung scripture. So kaya kapag hawak mo yung King James Bible because of this, no? Right? Dito mo mas, dito mo recognize kung ano yung Bible believer eh. Ang Bible believer, kapag hawak niya yung King James Bible, alright? He can say, that say it the scripture. Alright? Pero yung mga conservative scholars, at nagsasabing nasa original lang ang inspiration, okay? at ang original lang, ang perfect, hindi nila pwedeng sabihin ito yung scripture. <laughs> Oo, hindi nila pwedeng sabihin bakit. Kasi ang paniwala nila, ito translation lang ng original. Ang scripture, na-stuck lang dun sa original. This is not the scripture according to them. This is just a translation of the scripture. But we as Bible believers, we can say that the Bible that we hold in our hands na nakasulat sa English is the Scripture. Kaya nga, ba't hindi tayo naniniwala na ngayon sa ating panahon sa ibang version ng Bible eh, nandun pa rin yung inspiration ng Diyos. Because we can say na labas ng King's Bible, makikita natin, erroneous na ang lahat ng Bible. So dito talaga, significant by knowing that, it is significant because we can know that the Bible that we hold in our hands is the preserved, okay, the preserved words of God. It was given to us through the inspiration of God and it is preserved by God. Iningatan ng Diyos. Kaya nga meron tayong salita ng Panginoon. Every time we read the Bible, we are reading a perfect Bible. Every time we read the Bible, we don't have the originals. We have the words of God. We have the perfect word of God. At yun po, mga kapatid, ang battle, the greatest battle on earth, because it's the battle between the truth and error. Ngayon, inaalis po nila sa atin yung katotohanan na meron tayong scripture ngayon. Upang sa ganun, yung mga tao, ha, ang kanilang knowledge ay kanilang nire-refer doon sa kanilang teacher, hindi doon sa Bible mismo. Kaya kung wala yung teacher at wala siyang sinabi, hindi sila susun- hindi wala silang gagawin. Because ang kanilang, kanilang final judge, it's no more the scripture. It is already the person. Pero maliwanag sa Bible, ang judge natin, words of God, it's not the person. Kaya ang makita ninyo, ang exalted sa ating panahon, sabi nga nila, tatlo lang, Ang exalted sa ating panahon, number one is what? Money. Number two is sex. And number two is education. Yan ang exalted ngayon, di ba? 
Kapag highly educated ka, malaki ang bayad sa iyo. Kapag ka ikaw ay maraming pera, nagsasambang tao sa iyo. Kapag ka sex naman, lahat halos nandoon involved. Kaya makita ninyo, ginodjos ang education. Bakit ginodjos ang education? Kasi nga nandiyan din ang pera. At kapag nandiyan ang pera, ibig sabihin, nandiyan ang kapangyarihan. Kaya nga ayaw nilang ibigay sa normal na ta, sa ordinaryong tao ang salita ng Diyos. Gusto nila na mag-stay mag lang sa kanila. So our study is giving you, alright, the, the craftsman way of deceiving people. Yung mga craftsmen na yan, sabi nila, original lang po ang perfect. At ang King James Bible, malapit sa original. Mga kapatid, kung narinig po ninyo yon, amen? Yung tao na yon hindi siya naniniwala na yung King James Bible perfect. Kasi sinabi lang na malapit sa original. Yan tanong nga, eh, paano niya nalamang malapit sa original? Assumption ba yon o talagang nakita niya? Gano'ng malapit? <laughs> o, o narinig lang niya na gano'n ng copycat na lang yung be. So, nakikinig lang nila sila sa mga preachers nila. Okay? At pinipreach. Ang King James Bible is the Bible closest to the original. Diba? This is the Bible of the Reformers. But this is not the original. This is just accurate, reliable translation. But it is not perfect. Because the only perfect is the, king, is the original. So, yun po. No? So, doon babase tayo ngayon sa tinatawag nilang mga paniniwala. Ang tawag din, philosophy. Nakicharge mo ito. Okay? So, yun po. Any question, please? Para sagutin ni Brother Mike. Okay? Ito po kaya para masagot ni Brother Mike. So, ako po ay uh, alalay po niya ngayon. Amen? Isang magiting na alalay. So, shout out mo na, Brad, para buhay ang ating mga kapatiran. Okay, 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 okay. Shout out po sa atin. Shout out. Shout out po. Napakaganda po yung study po natin. Ako. What the scripture say about the scripture. Okay, shout out po kay uh, Sister Lainey. Charmaine from Japan. Amen. This is the Jane Sulano. Amen. The United Kingdom. UK. Richie Gallam from La Paz. La Paz Kingdom. Amen. La Paz Kingdom. La Paz. La Velia Daulo Patungan. From Marikina. Esa Amego Polonio. Lloyd Da Sulano. UK. UK. Linda Paz. Yeah. Hilda Da Casin. Canada. Canada. Pila Dresi Gregorio. Manila. Usilito Subrivilia Dunilo. Cainta. Pastor. Ivy Tarbago. Kenya. Pastor Ray Guloy. La Union. My Heart Race Melody. Laguna. August Rain. Madrid Hortalesa. Cagayan. Siguro. <laughs> Shout out po. Rhea Di Mayo Martin. Canada. Shout out po, uh, Nancy Hermoso. Uh, Taguig City. Chaliana Rose Gonzalez. Hong Kong. Jay Best Cortez. Paniki. Paniki City. Paniki Kingdom. Nolan May Francisco Gonzalez Nicolas. Jabo. Jabo. Al Buki. Manila. Oliver Hermoso. Taguig. Pastor Ronald Banyes Tanawit. That's uh, Mangartaren. Wela ni Mikupit. That's uh, Manila. Pastor Eric Grupo. That's, uh, no, that's uh, Tacloban City. Dayanara Torres. That's uh, Australia. Mayor Amitis. Hindi ko lang talaga yung Dayanara Torres. Mayor Amitis, that's Hong Kong. Okay, Nicolas Oh, Brad. Uh, Kung baka na dyan, get thee down. Okay, nasa siya ngayon. Hindi, na, umalis siya. Jordan Lloyd Pirlaire. At uh, I think that's Iloilo. I think. Ah, no. Parang bohol-bohol. Bohol. 
Happy birthday, Pastor. Happy birthday, Brother Mina, sa Kenya. Happy birthday po. Shout out po sa inyo. Amen, amen. Brother Christian Solano. That's UK. Uh, UK. Ronald Vinjola. Asan na siya kaya yan? Nasa, dating nasa Taiwan. Ngayon, I think nasa Singapore na siya. Bernard Tuerto. That's Japan. Joy, joy! That's uh, Cavite. Patrick Solano. That's UK. And others. Ano po? Ray Dairit. That's uh, Tarlac City. Amen. Question. Alright, so... So may sasagutin na si Brother ano? Mike. Pastor and Brother Mike. Hello. Hello. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Paano pag-save ka na, then nag-commit ka po ng suicide? Mm -hmm. Sa langit ka pa rin po ba punta ng soul? Alright, una. Una. Sinong magkakagustong mag-suicide? Okay. So gusto kong alamin niyo yan. Ha? Sino nagtanong? Hmm? Okay, so yeah, yeah. Actually, sasagutin natin yan in a very good answer. Una, sino ang magkakagustong mag-suicide? Sino? Alright? Lahat ng tao na masyadong na-depress. Sila yung magkakagusto. Diba? Lahat ng tao. People could experience a very, very uh, sabi natin, very hard and very depressing situation in life. Nobody would like to kill himself or herself. Sino? Maliban na lang yung nawala na sa katinuan ng kaisipan. Sabi niya, dilim na ang kaisipan niya. Nawala na sa isip na normal. Dumating na doon sa point na para sa kanya, ang katapusan ng kanyang buhay, yun ang sagot. Pagkag dumating ka sa point na gano'n, you are already psychologically incapacitated to decide right. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, wala kang kakayan ng mag-desisyon ng tama. Bakit? Kasi kinitil mo ang buhay mo eh. Sinong normal na tao ang papatayin niya ang kanyang sarili? Ang normal ang kaisipan, sino? Meron ba o wala? Meron. Yung abnormal ang isip. Pero paano tayo mga, paano ang isang tao papara, pupunta sa abnormality ng kaisipan? Kapag ka nawala na yung normal na pag-iisip. Ang tawag dyan, minsan, ay yung tinatawag nilang breakdown or mental breakdown. So sa mga ganong panahon, kapatid, hindi mo na control ang sarili mo. Yun nga ang gusto ng Diablo eh. Mangyari sa iyo. Wala ka ng proper judgment. Hindi mo na magawa yung tama. At alam natin kapag dumating ang point na gano'n, lahat tayo ay vulnerable to have that kind of situation in life na hindi natin nakakayanan minsan. May mga taong very weak. Hindi nila makayang sitwasyon. Simple lang na bagay. Talagang gumagawa na sila masama sa sarili nila. May mga suicide attempts, di ba? May mga tao dyan na kapag nagkaroon ng problema, sinalaslas, Okay? Iinom ng laso. Nakakita na ako ng ganyan. Talagang, nung naisip niya, mali ang kanyang ginawa. Humingi siya ng tulong sa doktor. Dok! Sabi niya, Dok! Dok! Tulungan mo ako. Eh, sabi ng doktor, ba't po kasi ininom ang laso? Hindi ko alam eh. Nawala, nawala ako sa isip ko. So, ibig sabihin, dumarating doon sa point na ganoon, kadilim ang mating mga kaisipan. At minsan kahit kristyano, darating siya sa point na ganoon. And we know some Christians. Talagang they are real Christians. But because of depression, because of problems, because of situations na talagang na-involve sila sa, sa wicked things in life, ano? Ano nangyari? Sila ay dumating sa point na kinitil nilang kanilang buhay. Pero siyempre, what said the scriptures? Tayo ba ay posibleng makapag-commit ng ganong classing suicide? Yes. Kaya nga binanggit sa Bible, ang mga possibilities na pwedeng mangyari sa isang mananampalataya. And it was written in the Bible in Romans chapter 8, verse number 32, uh, I think 37, and 35, I mean 35, and then 38, and 39. Basahin mo yan, Brother, Brother Ray. Basahin mo yan. 
Lahat ng mga possibilities na pwedeng mangyari sa isang Kristiyano, lahat yan, kasama na dyan, yung makitil mo ang sarili mong buhay. Andiyan na. Diba? Present, future. Alright? Lahat. Possible yan. Lahat ng possibilities nilagay dyan. Sabi niya, walang makapag-ihiwalay sa pag-ibig natin sa ating Panginoon sa Kristo. Sa ating Diyos na nakikristo Jesus. Ibig sabihin, inseparable ang isang save. Inseparable ang isang save sa Diyos. Okay? So you check that, ha? Gusto kong basahin mo yon. Pag-isipan mong mabuti, inseparable ang taong ligtas sa pag-ibig ng Diyos. So bakit, Pastor, nakakagawa tayo ng ganun mga kasalanan? Because we are still in the flesh. Eh si Pablo nga, eh, greatest Christian who ever lived. Pero pag pumunta mo sa Romans chapter 7, makita mo, ang issue sa kanya, yung gusto niyang gawin, hindi niya nagagawa. At yung ginagawa niya, yun ang ayaw naman niyang gawin. Romans chapter 7. So, ibig sabihin, sabi niya, sino makakapag-deliver sa akin sa wretched body na ito? Sino? E di kamatayan lang. So, anything can happen to you. So, ang sagot doon, Brad, Padre Ray, kung ang isang Kristiyano ay nawalan na siya ng normal na pag-iisip at nakitil niya ang kanyang buhay, hindi naman niya sinasadya yun. Kasi nga, nawala na sa isip niyang normal eh. Ha? For example, sa sobra niyang galit, napatay niya yung asawa niya. At bigla niyang naisip, mali yung kanyang ginagawa. Sobra niyang pagsisisi, kinatay na rin niya ang kanyang sarili. So wala na siya sa normal na pag-iisip. So nangyari noon, ang Diyos nandun pa rin ang kanyang awa. At hindi niya iaalis sa kaligtasan sa tao na yun. Okay? Kasi nga, ang, ang pagkitil ng buhay, hindi naman normal yan eh. Hindi kagaya ng patayan, di ba? Eh, nagaganap yan. Kahit na yung, yung tao nasa normal na isip, pumapatay tulad ng mga sundalo, pumapatay. Nagiging normal na lang ang pagpatay. Pero yung mga pagkitil ng buhay, talagang ano yan? Talagang sabihin natin, abnormality na yan. Pag dumating sa isip na abnormal na ang tao, sa isip, wala na. Anything can happen. Okay? Tapos meron pa yung drugs. Eh, pasta pa paano isang krisyano nag-drugs? At yun ang dahilan para pumatay siya ng tao. O pinatay niya ang kanyang sarili. Siya pa ba'y ligtas? Siyempre. Nauna kasi ang kaligtasan sa tao bago niya napa, napasok yung drugs. O kaya nag-drug addict siya tapos nagsisi, tumilala sa Panginoon, naging tapat sa Diyos, and then bumalik sa drugs, yun kapatid ay cover ng dugo ng Panginoon. Lahat yun, okay? expect ng Diyos ay sa taong niligtas niya ay babalik sa kasalanan. Expect ng Diyos yun. Amen? Bakit kilala niya tayo eh? Hindi ba niya tayo kilala? Sabi ng Bible, he, we, uh, God know that God knows our uh, our thoughts, our mind. ba? Diba? Ang Diyos alam niya lahat. Sabi ng Proverbs 15.3, sabi niya, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. He pondered the heart, sabi ng Bible. Alam ng Diyos ang puso natin. So, bago pa lang natin gawin ng isang bagay, alam na ng Diyos. Tama? So, ibig sabihin, nung niligtas ka ng Panginoon, hindi niya tinignan kung anong gagawin mo after na ikaw ay naligtas. Ang tinignan niya, ikaw ay dapat maligtas. At nakita niya ang iyong pagsisisi at pagkilala kay Kristo bilang tagapagligtas. O, hindi natin sinasabi dito, ha, Brother Ray, na kapag ang isang tao ay naligtas, ay gagawa na lang siya ng masama. Yung sinasabi mo ay isolated cases yan. Amen. So, hindi general rule na kapag tumagap ka Kristo, eh, hahayaan mo na lang ang pagiging kristyano. Hindi general rule. Ang general rule sa Bible, kapag tumagap ka kay Kristo, gagawa ka ng mabuti sapagat ikaw ay ligtas na. Yun ang general rule. Pero in case ng tao ay bumalik sa kasalanan, at siya ay, yun na, nagawa niya ang pinakamasasamang kasalanan. God, God's salvation is still there in that person. Okay? At yun ay nasa Bible. Romans chapter 8. Verse 38 and 39. Okay, 35, 38 and 39. Sige lang, Brad. Ano pa yung question? Question po from Sister Jessica J. Solano. Question po, yung mga Greek po, syempre, may titiyan nila yung version na Greek Bible. Mm, tama yun. Does that mean mas pure yung kanila? 
Ah, actually, meron tayong isa pang teaching diyan eh. Itong superiority of the King James over the original. Yung purity kasi, hindi doon sa kung anong language. Amen? Ang purity, na doon sa Diyos. Di ba? Ano sabi ng Bible? Sa Psalms 12, verse 6 and 7. Hmm. Pakibasa ng Brad. The words of the Lord are pure words. A silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Anong ingatan ng Diyos doon? Sa Psalms 12, verse 6 and 7. Yung pure words of God. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them. Ano yung pipreserve niya? Yung pure words of God. From this generation forever. Ano yung from this generation forever? Ibig sabihin, sa lahat ng panahon. So, yung panahon natin, dumating na yung point na tayo English, at dati, Greek ito. Men? Nung nasa Greek ito, nasa Greek form, siyempre pure. At nung itinasper sa English, pure din. Actually, sabi ng Bible, purified seven times. Ibig sabihin, habang ito'y umaandar ang panahon, nandun yung pag-pure ng Panginoon. Alright? So, ibig sabihin, kung i-compare natin ang Greek at King James, eh ano, mas pure. Pareho silang pure. Amen? Pero ito, purified seven times. Oh, pareho silang pure. Pero itong King James Bible, purified seven times. Oh, Anong gusto mo? Yung purified seven times o yung pure lang? Oh. Pero pareho silang pure. Oh. Actually, kung pag-aaral natin, ma- ma- malalim ang pag sa Biblia, pero ma-appreciate mo yan kapag ka pumunta ka na sa study ng italics. Ma-appreciate mo yung purity ng King James Bible. At saka, oh, at saka yung, ano, yung number, yung numerology. Kasi nga sa Greek, sa Greek kasi wala yung numerology. Yung mga, ano, yung arrangement sa pamagitan ng mga numbers. Okay? Sipin mo ba yung word na great? Diba? Dalawa lang great, uh, dalawang word sa Bible eh. Opposing word. Great at saka less. Uh-huh. Oh. Big and small. Male and female. Kung i-check mo yan, ano pang mas marami yung male o female? Dahil siyempre yung male, mas mataas siya sa, sa katungkulan. Iran mo lahat ang number ng male, mas mataas ang male o man sa woman. O male sa female. Paano nangyari yan? O, oh, sa King Jesus Bible mo lang makikita. Hmm. Anong mas marami, anong mas marami, anong mas malaki, yung sun o yung moon? O gano'ng karaming verses na ginamit sa sun at sa moon? Mas marami yung sun kaysa moon. Ay, yung great. Mas marami yung great kaysa sa ano? Sa less. Ganun. Amen? Isipin mong mangyayari yan sa Bible? So, ibig sabihin, that's amazing. Amazing. Oh. So, ganun. Ibig sabihin, they have the Greek word, Bible, alright? It's more pure than the King's Bible. Actually, if I'm going, if you're going to ask me which is, which is the, uh, uh, the King's Bible, than the Greek. Than the Greek. Okay? So, meron pa ba? Meron pa. Meron pa po yan. Shout out. Parang commercial lang. Senior nurse. Amen po. Amen po. Sige po. So mag-question lang po tayo habang tayo po ay... Siyan Galang. Siyan Galang. At saka po kay Sumulpot po. Sumulpot. Oo. Shout out. Brother Alfredo Solano. Amo po siya. Kabol. Shout out po. Hindi ko alam nakalimutan. Okay, tanong. Tanong, tanong. Si Brother Levy, ano dyan? Wala po. Wala siya. Ah, ito po. Magandang tanong po ni, ano, ni Sister Loita. Ito po sabi niya, Pastor. Pastor, may blessing ba ang buhay mo kung ginagamit mong Bible ay hindi KGB? Mm-hmm. Believe, uh, believer, believer ka naman, pero... Sabi kasi nila, madali daw maintindihan ang ibang translation. Alright. Pag pinag-usama kasi natin yung blessing, may tinatag silang common. 
common yun yun yung ulan araw between yung paap di ba yung gravity yung health mo that's common may mga taong masasamang masasama pero humihinga pa rin hanggang ngayon <laughs> di ba na enjoy pa rin nila yung init ng araw sa beach di ba pero ni ako naman nila yung perang kanilang ginagamit habang sila yung nagbibilag doon, nag-i-enjoy. This God's blessing is common to everyone. Diba? Kasi nga, nilagay na niya yun sa earth eh. Wala pang tao, nando na yun. Yung grace na yun, yung blessing na yun. Okay. Kaya makita ninyo, kahit ang iba, hindi ginagamit ang Kenya's Bible, eh, ang sasakyan maganda. Ang bahay maganda. Diba? Kasi nga, una, meron silang, meron silang magandang lugar. For example, napunta ka sa US, pagdating mo doon, ang ganda ng trabaho doon. Better than sa Philippines. So, pag sinabi natin blessing kasi, nakakaligaw yan eh, nakakadaya yan eh. Amen? Meron nga akong, ano, meron nga isang membro sa church, umalis sa church, ha, sa lighthouse. Noon, sa Lapas, umalis siya. Aba, nung siya umalis, umaani siya ng marami. Sabi niya, mabuti palang umalis ako sa Lapas, sa church. Kasi noon, hindi man ako umaani ng ganito. So, don't be deceived with the blessing. Don't be deceived with the blessing. Eh, kung blessing, eh, di mas marami yung may yaman na arabo sa atin. Eh, sa Dubai, pambira. Billion, billion pera. Mga ano doon, hari. So, don't be deceived with blessing. Kasi pag sinabi natin blessing, common yan eh, common. Pag masipag ka sa Pilipinas, masipag ka sa abroad, masipag ka sa maraming bagay, then you can earn money. Kaya nga ang utos na yun, na yun ni Solomon, eh, maging katulad kayo ng mga, mga langgam. Kasi masipag sila. So, ibig sabihin, pag sinabi natin blessing, it's deceitful. Tignan natin sa Ma- Matthew chapter 13. Okay. Yung uh, sinas- the sower and the seed. Okay. Na-choke, sabi niya yung word, dahil sa deceitfulness of riches. And then, punta ka sa 1 Timothy chapter 6 mamaya. Sige, Brad. Yung sabi niya, yung the deceitfulness of riches. Deceitfulness of riches. Yung nag-sow sa seed. Yun ang first parable. First parable yon Unang parable, the sower and the seed. So, ang nangyari dyan, the sower and the seed. Okay? Apat na ano yan, apat na lugar na kung saan tumubo, uh, uh, pinagbagsakan ng buto. Okay? Sabi nung isa, pumagsak sa wayside. Yung isa saan? Bumagsak sa stony place. Yung isa pumagsak sa thorny. Thorny, yung ma, ano, ma, maraming, ano, maraming tinik. Now, when explain po ni Jesus Christ yung parable, yung meaning ng thorny, ito po yung umusbong po yung buto, pero nasakal ng maraming mayabong na mga, ano. Okay. Ang sprung up, kaya lang nasakal. So, in-explain ni Christ yun. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Sinabi niya doon, the deceitfulness of riches. Word. Yan, ang maka- nakalagay ito sa salitang yon Sa Matthew 13, the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and become it unfruitful. O, yan. So, yung word, the deceitfulness of riches, makikita niyo yan sa 1 Timothy chapter 6, sinabi ng Bible, sa verse 10, the love of money is the root of all evil. So, makita niyo maraming pera sa mundo. Okay? Lalong-lalo na doon sa mga nagmamahal sa pera. Maraming pera sila. Okay? Pero hindi big sabihin, mas tapat sila sa Diyos. Hindi yun ang rule. Hindi yun ang measurement. Kasi nga, tulad nito, ah, I'm just uh, giving an example. Si Joel Olsten, ang kanyang preaching is prosperity. Gospel. So maraming mayayaman sa kanila. At ang, ang Bible niya, hindi King James. Pero ang daming mayaman. Punta ka sa CCF, hindi King James. Pero ang daming mayaman. Amen? Punta ka sa mga lugar na kung saan ay hindi pinipreach ang Bible. Pero maraming mayaman. Amen? Punta ka sa, ano, punta ka sa sabungan, ang daming pera doon. Mas maraming pera doon kaysa sa church. So, wag tayo magpapadaya doon sa blessing. Na yun ang rule natin, nasabi natin. Ano ba ang maganda? Pagpapalain ba ako ng Diyos kung ang King James Bible o NIV ang gagamitin ko? Ano ba? Saan ba ako pagpapalain ng Diyos? Ano yung word na pagpapala na yun? Ang masasabi ko lang, pagka pinag-usapan natin ng King James Bible, ang pagpapalang makukuha mo dyan ay yung katotohanan. Amen? 
Ano ba nagagawa ng katotohanan sa iyo? John chapter 8 verse 32. Sabi ng Bible, the truth shall make you free. Yung katotohanan. Mapapalaya ka saan? E di sa mali. Pero kapag nag-NIV ka, yayaman ka nga, pero nakakulong ka pa rin sa kasinungalingan. Kasi ang NIV, hindi nagturo yan ng mga aral, foundational beliefs ng Bible. Doon nga, inalis nga yung pagka-Diyos ni Kristo. Eh, yun ang pinakamahalaga sa lahat. So, kapag pinag-usapan natin yung pagpapala, anong klaseng pagpapala ang hinahagad mo sa buhay? Kung ang pagpapala ang hinahagad mo sa buhay, hanapin ang katotohanan, eh hindi mo makikita sa NIV yan. Makikita mo lang sa King James Bible. Kaya nga namin tinuturo ito, ano bang purpose nito? Hindi para kayo umaman at pagpalain ng material. Wala yan. Malayo <laughs> Hindi magbibigay sa inyo ng pera ito. Amen? Lalayo nga ang tao sa inyo eh. Dahil masyado kayong dogmatic sa King James. Pero, sisiguraduhin ko, ito naman ang landas ng katuwiran. Amen? Nasaan ba ang success? Na tunay. Minsan lang binanggit yung word na success. Oh, Joshua 1.8 This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have what? Good success. Good success. So it's, it's, if you're looking for blessing, the blessing that I can give you through the teaching of the King James Bible is the blessing of truth. And the truth shall make you free. Alright, so marami po pwede natin gamitin verses. Pero yun po yung logical and reason why we are teaching the King James Bible. Mm-hmm. Sige. Marami po yan. Ang blessing talaga is spiritual. Ephesians 1 verse number 6. We have been blessed with spiritual blessings in heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. Mm. Amen. Actually, talaga, Brad, ang talagang, ang talagang greatness ng tao ay yung nang sinabi sa Bible sa 1 Timothy chapter 6. Having food and raiment therewith to be content. Godliness with contentment is a great gain. Yun ang talagang greatness ng tao. Godliness with contentment. And you can see only the true godliness as the product of the scripture. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. So, yan ang bunga ng King James Bible. Amen? Mabuting gawain. Amen. Okay. Another one. Amen. Kay Brother Alfred Solano. Yes. <clears throat> Pastor, lahat po ba ng blessing galing sa Panginoon? Kasi nang dinidisip ng devil si Jesus, ibig sabihin may galing din kay Satan. That's right. But generally, it came, it came from God. Actually, ang blessing na binibigyan ni Satan, ay eh, galing din sa Diyos yan eh. Amen. Inangkin lang niya Sa totoo ba, may pag-aari ba Jablo? Wala naman. Ba? So, inangkin lang niya. Nasa kanya. Pero sa Diyos. Amen? Alright. So, ginagamit lang niya yung pamamaraan niya, yung kapangyarihan niya, para sa ito na pantawan ng pagpapalang material. Pero lahat yan ay galing sa Diyos. O. Pansinin mo, ha? Saan ba galing ang earth? Na kung saan ginagamit ng Jablo? Galing kay Christ. Galing kay God. Saan ba galing yung air na kung saan lumilipad si Lucifer? Galing kay God. Saan ba galing yung kapangyarihan ni Lucifer at katalinuhan niya? Galing kay God. Yung ability niyang magsalita at create ng good music, saan ba galing sa Diyos? Saan ba galing yung galing sa Diyos? So lahat ng kayang ibigay ng Diablo ay galing sa Diyos. Kaya lang ang ginagawa niya, inanakaw niya yun. Ba? Parang matitis yan. Nakalagay, bigay ni Mayor. Pero hindi naman talaga galing kay Mayor. Ira yun. Pinadala yun ng gobyerno para sa barangay, o kaya para sa syudad, o para sa bayan. Pero pag nagpagawa ng stadium, ang pangalan ng 
nakabandera. Pero sa totoo, ang pondo na yun, hindi galing sa bulsa niya. Sa totoo lang, yung iba doon, kinuhupit pa niya. Pero nakalagay. Ginawa ni. Kala mo talaga siyang nagpagawa. Eh. Mga mokong na yan. Ha? Maluloko, di ba? Ni governor. Pero sa totoo, hindi pa si governor nagpagawa. Yung mismong national fund. O kaya, tax ng tao. O, oh, ganyan din ang job. Kung nagbigay sa'yo ng kapangyarihan, ng awit na yan, para ikaw ay sumikat, sa totoo, galing lahat sa Diyos yun. Inangkin lang niya. Okay? Ngayon, balik tayo sa Bible natin, sa Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 4. Kasi nga, ino-offer yan ni Lucifer eh, ni Jesus Christ, yung kingdom. Pero yung offer na yan, kapatid, alam, ng, alam ni Jesus Christ ko pa paano kunin yun. Kaya lang tinetempt siya. Dinideceive siya. Ayan, dinideceive siya ng Lucifer. At ino-offer sa kanya yung kingdom. Kaya lang sa ibang paraan. Eh si Christ, alam niya mandaraya yon, Mandarambong. Maluloko. ba? Diba? Parang politician din yan. Amen? Oo. Oh. Kaya nga kumakapit yung ibang businessman sa politician. Bakit? Kasi nga, pag sila ang nakaupo, yung business nila, tatakbo na ng maayos. Ganyan ang Pilipinas kung bakit mahirap. Amen? Maraming mandarambong, maraming maluloko. Kasi nga, espiritu yung satanas ang mandar eh. Hindi yung espiritu ng Diyos. Kaya nga, ang mga taong tapat sa Panginoon, hindi sila nagnanakaw. Hindi sila nag-aangkin ng, kan- ng hindi kanila. Sinusunod nila yung utos ng Diyos. Thou shall not steal. Thou shall not covet thy neighbor's goods, thy neighbor's wife. Di ba? O, yung mga sumasanib sa kanila, yung espiritu ni satanas, yan yung mga pinagawa ni congressman. ba? Diba? Pero sa totoo, hindi naman pera ni congressman. Pera ng tao. ba? Diba? O, ganun din ang Lucifer. Kala mo siyang nagbibigay, pero lahat ng binibigay niya, galing sa Panginoon. Merong isang, ano, merong isang scientist ng yayabang siya. Lahat ng ginagawa ng Diyos ninyo, kaya namin gawin. Sabi ng Diyos, salita ng Diyos. Sige nga, gumawa nga kayo ng Kumuha nga kayo ng robot? Ah, madali yan, sabi ng mga scientists. Siyempre, kukuha na sila ng materyales, no? Pagkuha nila ng materyales, kukuha sila ng, kukuha sila ng iron, steel. Okay. Nung kukunin na nila, sabi ng Diyos, oh, huwag kayong kukuha sa akin. Umamit kayo ng sarili ninyo. Eh, paano makakagawa yung scientists eh, lahat ng bagay galing sa Diyos? Kaya hindi nila magagawa yung galing, yung, yung bagay na kaya nilang gawin kasi nga lahat, property ng Lord. ba? Diba? Diba sabi ng Panginoon, the Lord owns uh, the thousands of cattle, thousands of hills. Pag-aari niya yun. Pag-aari niya. Lahat. Hmm. Sige po, any question? Question po, my brother Richie Galang. Kung alam ni Satan ng Bible, Pinaniniwalaan niyo ba lahat ng nasa Bible? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Siya isang Bible believer. From cover to cover. From head to foot. He is a Bible believer. Dispensationalist. Rightly dividing. Amen. So what's the problem with Lucifer? Bakit di siya saved? Because wala siyang submission to his authority. Amen. Parang ganito lang yan. Binigay lahat sa yung rules ng driving. O ganito yan, wag kang, wag kang magkocross dito, wag kang kakaliwa. Yung, yung red light, uh, titignan mo, stop ka doon. Lahat yun, alam mo. Kabisado mo lahat. Memorize mo lahat. Pati period, coma. Alam mo, kung capital letter ang start, <laughs> alam mo lahat, di ba? Identify mo. Up, hindi dapat dito. Kaliwa lang ako. O kaya kanan lang ko. So alam mo, no? Ha? O, nung ngayon? O, may lisensya ka na. Nakapasakay, alam mo eh. Abisado mo lahat eh. Nakapasado ka, pasado ka. Sa exam. Ito ngayon, application. O, ba't ka hinuli ng polis? Ba't ka hinuli ng polis? Eh, alam mo naman. Alam mo naman. Kasi nga, hindi ka tumutupad. 
So, it doesn't mean that you know everything, you are saved. Ang knowledge is not salvation. Ang knowledge is just a start of salvation. Knowledge is just part of salvation. What is real salvation is that you know it and then you have the will to accept it. And then you trust it. Oh. So kaya maraming taong alam nila si Kristo ay Diyos, alam nila si Kristo ay ang siyang tagapagligtas, pero nasa impyerno sila. Bakit? Sapagat wala silang will na tanggapin si Kristo sa kanilang buhay. Okay po? Ah. Oh. Hmm. Punta ka sa Book of James, pagkita mo yon. Ah. Kay Christian Galang. Hindi, hindi muna sa Book of James. Man. Even the devil believe and, e, and even tremble. James 2.19? Sige, basa. Tagabasa kay. 2.19. Oh. Bayo mo yan. James 2.19. Yung the devil, even the devil believe. James 2.19. Thou believest that there is one God, thou dost well. The devils also believe in tremble. Oh, yun. Nanginginig pa. Oh. Eh, bakit di sila ligtas? Eh, kasi wala namang will eh. Wala. Hindi, hindi nila niloob na kilalanin ang tagapagligtas ang Panginoon. Ang Diyos. Ayun ang sundin sa kanilang buhay. Amen? Oh. Hindi ibig sabihin Bible believer ka. Ha? Eh, tapos na doon. Dapat yung, sin yung sinasabi yung pininiwalaan mo, dapat yung pinagtiwalaan mo. Tama? O. Oh. Bilib ka ng bilib. Bilib ka ng sinasabi mo. Pero bakit hindi ka paligtas? Kasi hindi mo nang pinagtitiwalaan eh. Parang yung merong isang tao na uh, siya ay isang cyclist. Pagaling na cyclist. So gumawa siya ngayon ng Parang wire, dulo sa dulo. Sa isang malaking falls. Dulo sa dulo. Tapos sabi niya, kayo ba? Kanya? Naniniwala ba kayo? Kaya kung mag-cross dito using this bike. Gamit ang bike nito. Palakpak ang tao. Naniniwala po kami. Tapos, naniniwala ba kayo? Kanya? Kapag ka gumamit ako ng, nagsakay ako ng bigas, ay makapag- Ta travel pa rin ako kanya. Pakokross ko pa rin itong wire na ito. Makakalipas ako, makakalipat ako sa kabila. Naniniwala po kami, palakpak ng tao. Magaling po kasi kayo eh. Niniwala po kami. Niniwala ba kayo na kapag nagsakay naman ako ng tao sa likod ko? Ha? Gamit ang bike nito, makapagkokross ako sa kabila. Naniniwala po kami, palakpak ng mga tao. Bilib na bilib sila. Sabi niya, pwede bang mag-volunteer ang isa sa inyo? Walang gusto mag-volunteer kasi... <laughs> Oh, bilib lang sila. Pero they cannot trust. They cannot trust. Hmm. Sige, Ibing. Hello? Ina, ating itong tanong na ito, Pastor, eh. Kay Christian Galak. Pastor, pwede ba natin gamitin Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 5. Come back. <laughs> okay, sige. Ecclesiastes 5, 5. <laughs> Nagpipreach ng panaginip sa'yo, bro? Totoo yun. Amen? Ganito yan, kung paano magagamit ang panaginip. Sa Old Testament, ang panaginip ay paraan ng Diyos para yung mga vision. Okay? Ipaalam sa kanila. Sige, Brad. Ecclesiastes 5.5. Ipaalam sa kanila kung ano yung gusto ng Diyos. Direct yun. 
Kasi nga, ang, ang, ang Old Testament, New Testament, hindi pa naman complete. Ibig sabihin ng Revelation, hindi direct na sa Diyos. Ay sa tao. Okay. But since we have the Bible, alright, lahat ng mga basic needs ng tao, kikita mo na. Amen. Kaya nga may pinag-aralan kami yung study namin, yung lesson namin, dapat sumama ka brother Christian, ang study namin, how can you find the will of God? How can you find the will of God? Pag-aralan mo yun, brother. Masamama ka sa Zoom, malalaman mo, papano mo yung kalooban ng Diyos. Without dreams, ha, you can know God, God's will. Okay, pero sakaling pagkaroon ka ng panaginip, ito, okay. Si brother, ano, nanalo po siya, malaki ang pinanalo niya. Dahil sa birthday niya na naginip siya, nakinagat daw siya ng aso. So, nilurok yon, So, nilagyan ng numero, kinaya. Okay, sige, Ecclesiastes 5.5. Nanalo, ba? Nanalo. 8,000. Si, ano, Bostik. Nung siya yan, believer pa. Sige. Ecclesiastes 5.5. Ito po ang sabi ng Bible. Better is it that, huh? better is it That thou shouldest not bow. That thou shouldest bow. Tingnan dreams yan. Dreams. Yung sa dreams kanya. Multitude dreams. of dreams. Three. Yan, five, three. three. Sige. For the dreams cometh through the multitude of business. And a fool's voice is known by the multitude of words. Yun. Sabi niya, multitude of business. Ibig sabihin, masyado kang maraming iniisip. Marami kang inaalala. So dahil sa inaalala mo nung ikaw ay conscious pa, gising ka pa, yun ang palaging naglalaro sa isip mo. ba? Diba? Palaging naglalaro sa isip mo. Para bang meron kang pagkukulang, nakikita mo pagkukulang mo. Sa Bible, nakikita mo ang pagkukulang mo. Pagkukulang mo sa yung church. Nakita mo na malayo ka sa gawain ng Diyos. Conscious ka pa nun, ha? Nakikita mo na ng pagkukulang mo. Kaya yung pagkukulang mo na yon na palaging... Multitude of business, nasa isip mo yon. Kaya pagtulog mo, di ba? Yun. Pagtulog mo, dala-dala mo siya. Kaya napapaginipan niya, ganito sabi niya, Christian! Bumalik ka na! O, yun ang napapanood mo. Kasi nga, yun ang naiisip mo palagi. Bumalik ako sa Panginoon. Bumalik. So, ibig sabihin, hindi man, hindi man talaga yun ang Diyos, pero ginagamit ng Panginoon yung panaginip na yun para ipaalala sa'yo na meron kang pagkukulang. Pero kahit na hindi ka managinip, alam mo na may pagkukulang kayo. Nadala mo lang yun dahil sa palagi mong iniisip to. Palagi mong iniisip. Palagi mong iniisip. At sa pagtulog mo, dala mo yun. Di ba? Di ba nangyayari sa atin yan? O, oh, palagi natin iniisip yung utang. May utang tayo. Utang. Hanggang sa pagtulog natin, sinisingil tayo. <laughs> Ganun na nangyayari. Hanggang sa pagtulog natin, may naniningil. <laughs> Kasi ang inisip natin, utang. O ganun din, Pater. <laughs> ah, sige, Brad. Let's ask us five days. So, marami tayong galang ngayon, ha? Brother Richie Galang, pakiexpound daw po yung ano mo, sir. Ano na kasi? They were settled in heaven. Whatever. Mm. So, Ay? Secrets, sabi ng Bible doon, no? Tapos sa Deuteronomy chapter 31, Thy word is settled in heaven. Tapos sa Psalms 190, di ba? Thy word is settled in heaven. Ibig sabihin ng settled, wala nang babaguhin doon. Settled na eh. Yung King James Bible, pag hindi na niniwalang settled na yan, eh di dadagdagan mo pa yan. So, yung heaven, ipig sabihin, God already declared that the Bible is perfect. Final. Yan ang ibig sabihin noon. So, yung heaven, nandun ang, isipin mo, yung Word of God nasa heaven, ang Word of God nandito rin. May chapter 31 sinabi niya. Yung word niya nasa langit at yung word niya nasa, nasa earth. Okay? So, ito 
settled in heaven. Why? Because the word of God is final. You can't change it. Unchangeable. So, yun ang ibig sabihin nun. Thy word is settled in heaven. Settled. Ibig settled. Hindi mo na. No? Kung ang Diyos ang magsasalita tungkol sa kanyang salita, for example, ang Diyos upo, nakaupo siya sa trono niya at magsasalita siya tungkol sa word of God. Kasabi niya, ang salita ko, oh, thy word, is settled in heaven. Ang salita ko, ay settled na. 31. Mm -mm. I think last verse. Check mo. Kung hindi, chapter 30 din. Check mo yung chapter 30, last verse. Okay po, no? Settled, ibig sabihin, unchangeable. Final. Hindi na dapat tagdagan. Settled na eh. If you want it unsettled, oh, na ibig sabihin, no? di ba sabi ng Bible, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So, pag sinabi natin settled, ibig sabihin, fixed na siya. Hindi mo na siya pwedeng babagoyin. Kaya nga sabi sa Revelation 22, huwag dagdagan, huwag bawasan. O, oh, ang kanyang salita. Settled eh. Okay? Preserve. Alright, so may question ba, Brad? Oh. Fix na. Sige. So, settled na tayo. Chabi po, chabi po si Mike. Hindi, chabi niya doon. <laughs> oh, chapi. <laughs> Ang pagpapastor ay binanggit sa Biblia na isa sa mga panawagan ng Diyos. Okay? Maliwanag ba tayo? Maliwanag ba tayo? Chapi, chapi. Nako, paano patay tayo? So, Naiintindihan ba? Naiintindihan ba yung aking sasabihin? Pakicheck mo nga, double check. Kasi sasagutin po natin yung pagpapastor, maganda yun. Brother, may pakisab, pakikon mga yung God enabled me and put me into the ministry. 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. So, ano ang may advice natin sa gustong magpastor? Okay? First ang pagpapastor po ay isang panawagan ng Diyos. Okay? Okay? So, bago po mangyari po yun, okay? ito muna po yung process na makikita natin sa Bible. no? 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that He counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Yon, Putting me into the ministry. So, the process before you jump to your dream of being a pastor, so, dapat na doon yung ano, enabling. Ang ibig sabihin ng enabling, tuturuan mo na salita ng Diyos. So, wag mo na magmadali. Kung gusto mo, mami, desire ka, hindi mawawala yon. Kung talagang gusto mo. Pero ang proseso mo na, enabling. Enabling, ibig sabihin, parang sundalo yan. Bago ka sumuong sa laban, may training, di ba? Paano ka humawak ng mga sandata mo? Paano ka humarap sa enemy? Paano iniwasan ang mga, ang mga bombs? Di ba? Marami yan, maraming, marami sa training. Schooling, everything. Kaya, kasi iniibol sila eh. Kasi nga, meron silang laban ang harapin. Lahat ng mga courses, profession, ganun yung dinadaan. Dadaanan mo. So, enabling mo na. So, sa church, dapat maging faithful muna tayo. Sabi niya, enable me and counted me faithful. So, faithfulness, ang pinakamahalaga. Obedience. So, bahala ng Diyos kung saan ka ilalagay ng Panginoon later on. Pero ang first and foremost, ang Diyos natutuwa kapag ikaw ay na willing kang magpagamit sa Panginoon. Yun una. At ang Diyos nang bahala sa kanyang plano sa iyo. Kasi ang Diyos ang may plano. Eh. Bago ka nagkaroon ng plano, ang Diyos may plano sa atin. Okay? Na tayo ay mag-serve sa Kanya. Pero siyempre, may kanya-kanyang aspect of service yan eh. Pag nagpastor ka, it's a different aspect of service. Okay? So, dadang kasi enabling. Kaya nga may study. No? Yung iba, 
dumadaan pa sila sa Bible school para doon sila mag-aral. Para pagdating ng panahon na gusto na nila mag-step in, in pastoring, meron na silang alam. Orientation. So, what you have to do is first study, and then be faithful sa loob ng church, and then someday God will open doors for you. Lalo na kung nadoon ka na sa maturity, God will open doors. And you, you will know, meron ka ng proper wisdom and equipment, then you can enter the ministry. Huwag magmadali. Be patient. Amen? Kasi progress yan eh. Progressive. Parang bata yan. Talaki. Hanggang sa maging adult. Ganun din ang spirituality natin. So don't, don't job uh, immediately to the ministry. Prepare yourself. And then, of course, be willing to be submissive sa kung saan ano man ang church na kayo involved o sino man, saan man. Okay? So, yun. Yun ang binanggit ng Bible. Kaya nga, sa 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, bago sila magturo, dapat faithful men muna who, who are able to teach others also. Faithful men. Faithfulness. Okay? So, yun. Question? Uh, ako, kung ako ipapatatanungin nyo dyan at hindi nag-aaral, ibig sabihin hindi nag-aaral. Pag sinabi kasi hindi nag-aaral, eh, hindi ko nga alam kung ano yun. Eh. Kasi una, hindi ko church. Kasi pag hindi nag-aaral, ano yung pinag-aaralan? Medyo mahirap kong sagutin ng diretso. Pero kung siya ay nag-aaral, whether hindi siya nag-Bible school, pero siya ay nag-aaral. Amen? Kasi dito sa men namin, marami dito nagpipreach. Pero sisiguraduhin ko muna, bago sila tatawyo sa pulpito, alam nila yung sinasabi nila. At di sila magkakalat. Okay? Kasi nakakalungkot na pinag-preach mo, di naman siya... Ang, kasi kadalasan niyan, kapag ka ang isang tao walang alam sa Bible, ang ipipreach lang niya, yung filosofiya niya. O yung kanyang natutunan sa school, o yung kanyang mga stock knowledge, uh, hindi pa niya talaga properly understood ang Bible. Kaya madalas niya, ang pinipreach niya, yung laman ng kanyang kaisipan na yun ang kanyang unawa pero hindi siya guided ng scriptures iba yun talagang nag-aral pero yung sinasabi mo nag-aral hindi naman basically dadaan ka sa Bible school okay nag-aral yung may alam siya sa mga basic basic foundation ng teachings ng Bible sa doctrine basically no pagkatapos ni Kristo kaligtasan tungkol sa Bible word of God o yun yung Gospel na pinipreach natin. Baka mamaya eh. Gospel na, full gospel ang kanyang <laughs> pinipreach. Kaya importante talaga yung dadaan sa pag-aaral muna. Yun yung, actually, ganun din ang sagot ko kanina. Amen? Study first. Sabi nga ng Bible, study. Study to be quiet. And work with your own hands. Mag-aaral. Okay, so wala na po ang tanong? Meron pa? Okay, Sister Jessica. Mm. Pastor, question po. Yeah. Mahirap po ba magpastor? Uh, noon po ay marami pa akong buhok dito sa harap. Okay. After 25 years. Ba? 25 na rin ang aking hibla na aking po. Kung gusto po ninyong mapabilis ang pagkalagas ng buhok, pastor kayo. Kung gusto po ninyong magkaroon kayo ng maraming mga sakit ng nakim. Sakit tinakom. Ayun. Maraming ano. Marami kayo niyan. Amen. Gusto ninyong mataas ang presyo niyo palagi. Amen. Pastor kayo. Amen. O, gusto niyong palagi kayong i-blame. Magpastor kayo. Amen. Pero that's the other side of the story. Amen? Marami naman magmamahal sa iyo. Dahil nga, nakikita nila yung pagpapagal, pagtsatsaga, at kahit na nandun yung talagang labor, nandun ka at hindi ka umalis. Yun, that's the other side. Pero, hindi madali. Sinabi ni Paul yan, di ba? Ang kwento niya sa 2 Corinthians chapter 4, makita mo, talagang, lalo na kapag ang pinasuran mo, yung lugar ang pinasuran mo, hindi accept, hindi ano, hindi responsive ang tao, hindi accepted ang gospel. Nakapagal. 
Para ka nagtatanim ng okra sa simento. So, mahirap. No? It depends naman sa lugar. Tulad yung kay Pastor Madriaga, nakita ko dahil alos kamag-anak niya lahat. So, walang problema. During the time nga ng COVID, eh, sila nag enjoy sila. Tayo takot na takot. Sila naman tuwan-tuwa. Si bakit? Kasi nakakulong lang sila doon sa baryo nila. Men, hindi sila masyadong affected. So, depende. May mga talagang mas grabe ang situation. Tulad ng China, magpastor ka doon. Ah. Parang anytime, eh, maghihiwala yung ulo mo sa leg mo. Ganun. Sa Kenya, di ba? Hated ka kasi nga, bakit? King James Bible ka eh. Eh, Pentecostal yung buong country. Oh. So, depende. Muslim religion. Hindi ka pa bumababa sa aeroplano, sumasabog ng katawan mo. Okay. So, maraming, ano, maraming situation. Mahirap. Kasi frontline ka eh. Ikaw yung unang frontliner. Ikaw yung unang sasalubong sa spiritual warfare. Mahirap. Okay? Siyempre, may reward naman ang Diyos. May blessing ang Panginoon. Right? So, what else? Wala na? So, please, be with us. Uh, every night po ito. Sana po ay uh, uh, medyo may pwersa na ako ngayon kasi we have Brother Mike here. And uh, tinetrain ko na rin si Brother uh, June Amen. na magturo po. Amen? Actually, gustong-gusto na niyang gumawit ngayong gabi. Kaya lang, sabi niya, napahaba yung Bible study ni Brother Mike. Okay. Uh, pag ganun siya. Okay, next time daw po, paghahanda po niya kayo ng awit. Okay. Why my Cristo? Yan. Ayun, ang kinakanta na niya. Okay, so let's pray. Let's pray. Amen. Okay, Brother, uh, Brother Mike, please lead us in prayer dito. Amen. Uh, hope and pray you enjoyed that Bible study. Magandang gabi po sa inyo ng lahat. Tayo po yung manalangin, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord, for giving us this night sa Bible study po namin. Maraming salamat, Panginoon, sa mga nag-participate. Continue. Bless them, O God. I pray, Panginoon, na yung mga narinig namin, maging uh, source ito, Lord, ng aming humility and knowledge. And of course, Lord, so we are be able to defend the King James Bible, which is your yeah. Word of God. And thank you, Lord, for giving us this book in our hands, available, perfect, preserved, and pure. Salamat, Panginoon, sa goodness mo sa amin and grace. And Lord, we also ask na this night, bigyan mo kami ng masarap na kapahingahan. And Lord, we pray for Solana family, for Sister Jessica and her husband at sa anak po nila, kagalingan, Panginoon. Ganun rin po, Lord, sa mga kapatiran namin, kay Sister uh, Eliza, Eliza Cabo, Panginoon, yeah. pagalingin niyo po sila. And Lord, you continue protect us, Lord, from this pandemic. Lord, dalangin po namin na magpatuloy po kami until the Lord Jesus Christ comes and take yeah. us home to heaven. Salamat po. This is our humble prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Brother, uh, no. Okay. Closing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Happy COVID-19! Amen!